Okay, um, we talked about integration by substitution yesterday. You're going to hear me refer to this as you do substitution sometimes because that's normally what we write down, U and DU. So you do substitution, you're going to hear from time to time there. Let's um, take a minute and listen to somebody else talk about how to do this and see if that makes it any better for us. Can y'all hear that okay? Okay, so that's <clears throat> his rendition of you do substitution, of integration by substitution. So as you looked at those four or five problems last night, did any of them cause you great grief or did you have an opportunity to look at those? If you didn't have an opportunity, I'd rather you not ask questions. But if any of them, the one that jumped out to me as being, I guess it was the last one. Well, let's get to slide here. I think there was one. I think that was the last one, or that was one of. To me, that was that was the one that could give you the most difficulty. What did you determine to let you be in that case? Okay, he should be in his office, dear. <clears throat> you've kind of you've got some options there. What? You might let U be sine, you might let U be cosine, you might let U be cosine squared. But just like you talked about on the video, try to let U be something where you can see a derivative close by too. So 
Uh, the easiest thing, the best thing to do here is to let u be cosine of x because then the derivative of u is minus sine of x. And if we move the minus sign over, it becomes minus du equals sine x dx. So now that's a relatively easy substitution to do. So if you didn't get that, go back and try with that substitution and see what you can come up with. Let's follow up with a few of the problems that we worked with yesterday and uh, a few more like we were working yesterday. See if you can uh, come up with a solution for this slide here. Uh, and I'm going to check and see how many of how many more of these we want to look at today. Yes, dear. Could you do it the other way? That's a good question. All right, so could you say uh, u equals sine x? All right, if you did that, then du would be cosine x dx, right? Okay, now if you did that, let's see what we would have here, okay? We've got the integral. For sine x, we can put u. For cosine x dx, we can put u. But we've got cosine squared. We've essentially got cosine x times cosine x here. So we could replace one of these and the dx with a du, but that leaves us with a cosine x still out here. So we can't, uh, a cosine x, we can't integrate that like that there because we've got that. So you couldn't really go anywhere with it. I think your u is going to have to be whatever is being squared. Whatever is in, we're not going to see a lot of these. But the ones like this, most of the time, the one that's got the higher power, that's where your u is going to need to be at most of the time. I don't think, I don't think you could get there at all if I know you couldn't get there easy. I don't think you could get there at all by letting you be the sign of x there. Okay, so look at this problem here. We're just going to take a few minutes to look at three or four and then give you some time to work on uh, some of your problems that you've got to do. Typically, how do we identify what U needs to be? Um, most, complicated looking. most complicated looking. Anything else that you look for? Parentheses. Inside of something. Those are the type things we're looking for. So, probably X cubed plus 5. And then, remember I told you a common mistake students will make is now looking at the original problem to write down what their du is. You have to get your du from what you wrote down for you. Your du has to be 3x squared. Now is when you compare it to the problem over there. We don't have 3x squared over there. One third. That's right. So we're going to take the one third over here. And now we've got exactly what we do there. Okay? Now, I'll tell you this, if you go look at some people's videos on this and you go talk to some other teachers and even look at uh, some other books, they're not going to say you can do this. They're going to say, well, you need a 3 here to make this a 3x squared. And they're going to say, well, then you need to write a 3 here, but if you write a 3 inside the integral, you've got to write a 1 third outside of the integral. And there's nothing wrong with that. I just think that's very difficult to understand how to get that. We're going to wind up at the same place as what they would, but that's a different way to approach the same problem. It's just not the way that I think works well for you. So now when we um, substitute in, we're going to put u in and write it to the one-half power. The x squared and dx, we're going to replace with du. And I believe I mentioned this, I would always put the constant out in front of the integral sign because it will just make it easier to integrate. 
one-third the integral of u to the one-half, then we've got one-third u to the three-halves divided by three-halves plus c, two-ninths x cubed plus five to the three-halves all plus c. So that would be your final answer there. Questions, comments, observations? I certainly can. All right. Okay, we looked at this. We looked at one similar to this yesterday. So, um, Jordan, what do you think your U would be on this particular problem? All right, very good. It is in the parentheses. That's a good place to start. U is 10x plus 2. So, du is secant squared x dx. Now, what's the problem with that? Yeah. There's a 2 over there. Okay. So that's, we've got a couple of options here, okay? It's fine if we wanted to say, okay, well, we need this to be 2 secant squared. So 2 secant squared x dx. And thinking algebra, if I multiply the right side by 2, I have to multiply the left side by 2. That's fine to think, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Another thing you could say is, well, this 2 is a constant number. What have we been doing with a con any constant numbers? Move it to outside the integrand. I like that option better for because of a problem that we're going to, or some problems that we will see probably in a couple of slides here. I like the option of moving that 2 out there. Again, it doesn't matter which way you look at it. Because if we look at it the way I've got it written here in green, we say, okay, with 2 secant squared dx, that's what I've got. So I'm going to replace it with 2 du. Where are we going to put the 2 at? Out in front of the integral anyway. Oh, that's why I've been telling you to do So You're going to wind up at the same place. So now we're going to integrate. In place of tan x plus 2, we put u. In place of secant squared dx, we're going to put du. So we get 2 times 1 half u squared plus c, which becomes tan x plus 2 plus c. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tan x plus 2 quantity squared. My, my apologies there. If you got to catch me there, I'll mess up on it. All right. Is this still feeling okay to you? Right. I'm not going to waste our time with that. You can do that. What about there? That becomes a little bit more challenging. My first thought is, do you need to do you do substitution? That's a difficulty that students get into here is, okay, I've got to do you do. I've got to do you do. I've got to do you do. So th that may be a first thing for you to figure out. And, and as you're thinking about that, I think you'll find that, yes, we have to because we've got a composite function here. We've got something inside the square root. All right? What's the problem? What do you all see as a potential problem with this? There's nothing outside the square root, is it? Or it doesn't look like there is. Well, it, assuming we're going to do some type of substitution, what do you think you would have to be? 2x minus 1. So just following the same thing we've been doing, it's been working, let's see if it'll keep on. What would du be then? 2 dx. So what do we need to do? Right. There's a 1 there, isn't it? We've got 1 dx over there. We need 2 dx. So either you're going to multiply that by 2, or the way we've been thinking of this is we'll make this 1 half 
du equals dx, right? Well, if one half du equals dx, then now we can substitute in. I'm going to put the one half and the du, the one half outside the radical. I'm going to put u where 2x minus 1 was, and u to the one half power. And now we integrate that. That's one half u to the three halves divided by three halves, which is two thirds, which becomes one third, two x minus one to the three halves, all plus c. And again, you sh should be able to check your work by taking the derivative and see if you wind up back where you started at. Okay, we're comfortable with that? Now keep that in mind. In fact, keep that on your tablet right where it's at while we look at this. This problem looks almost the same, doesn't it? Would you agree? Almost the same. The only difference is we've got that x. Well, what do we know based on the last problem? If we let u be 2x minus 1, what's going to happen? du is going to be 2dx, and nothing's... Uh, 2D, no, that's inside joke. Uh, then we don't know what the x does out there. What are we going to do with it? That's confusing, right? We, how are we going to get rid of this x? Because we know we, we aren't capable of integrating something that looks like that with x's and u's in it. That's kind of where it seems like we're headed to, okay? This is, this is to me, the, the most challenging problem for students to get a good handle on how to do. We're still going to start off just like, we, just like your instincts say you do. You're going to let u be 2x minus 1. That means du is 2dx. Well, we don't have a 2 over there. So obviously we think we, it's 1 half du equals dx. It's nothing changed so far. So let's see, now, now it's when we would normally go over here and start substituting in. For the 2x minus 1, I can put u to the 1 half. For the dx, I can put du and 1 half. What can I put for the u? Excuse me, what can I put for the x? I'm sorry. Keep going. Keep going. Manipulate u up here and solve, a, solve it for x. If u is 2x minus 1, then if we add 1 to both sides, we get u plus 1 is 2x, right? And we get u plus 1 divided by 2 equals x. You agree? That's just taking this algebra expression and solving it for x. Now, so what can we put in place of x over here? That ugly creature right there, u plus 1 divided by 2. And you're saying, that doesn't look any easier than what we had to begin with. But it is. Trust me. Okay? That's the steps we need to go through. So... You, we substituted the u in, then we had to solve the u back out, solve for x to get there, okay? Now we've just got to integrate that. Well, we're going to do, I'm going to do some cleaning up before I do any, anything there, okay? I'm going, I've already got a one-half outside. I'm going to pull another one-half outside of the radical to make it u plus 1, u to the one-half du. Do you see where that second one half came from? I've got u plus 1 right here. That's the same as 1 half times u plus 1 in parentheses. Just make it easier if we don't have to deal with fractions all the way through. Well, you say, I still can't do anything. Now, I can't integrate that, can I? Why but now I can multiply it out, can I? I can distribute this u to the one half through. Well, why couldn't I do that up there? Yeah, I was thinking, because uh, it's to the one half, so 
Right. We could up here. We couldn't distribute this to there. There's, there's not anything to distribute it through to. Agree? We can't distribute uh, distribute the x through here because what do we have to do first? The power. We've got to figure out what 2x minus 1 to the 1 half is before we distribute it through. So there's no way to distribute this through there. But now that we've gotten down to this point, now we can distribute through. We can make this 1 fourth on the outside, u to the 3 halves plus u to the 1 half du. That's just distributing, adding adding your exponents. Now we should be able to integrate that not by u do substitution, just by using our power rule. We've got a one-fourth u to the five-halves, two-fifths u to the five-halves, plus u to the three-halves, two-thirds u to the three-halves. Now, we want to get rid of the u. Remember, u was what? 2x minus 1. So, 1 tenth 2x minus 1 to the 5 halves plus 1 sixth 2x minus 1 to the 3 halves plus 6. And if you take the derivative of that, after about 20 minutes, you can get back to where we started from. But it'll take you a good 20 minutes to get there. One-fourth times two-fifths, that's two-twentieths, which I reduced down to one-tenth. Same thing, one-fourth times two-thirds, two-twelfths, which I reduced down to one-sixth. Okay, we've worked through a lot of examples here because you're going to see a lot of different things with these. Uh, I encourage you as you're working through problems to go back and look to see if you've got anything uh, similar to what we've done. Let's look at this one last problem because it's a doozy. Okay? Sine squared 3x, cosine 3x. All right? What do you think your u should be? Sine 3x, what makes you think that? It's to the second power. Again, if, if you go back to what we were saying before, it looks like it's the most complicated thing. Now, what's your du? Cosine 3x times 3 dx. Where did you get that extra 3 from? Chain rule. You're taking the derivative of sine 3x is cosine of 3x times the derivative of 3x, which is 3. So you can't forget the chain rule. See, this is not like math classes you've had before where once you've done with it, you can forget it. Nope, can't do that and have success here. So still got to take the derivative of it. Well, I don't see a 3 over there, so I'm going to divide the one-third out. All right, and now it should be something I can work with. I've got a one-third. Well, for sine 3x, I'm going to put u. That's a u squared, squared, cosine 3x dx. I can put the one-third and the du. So now it becomes a much easier problem to deal with. Again, some videos you might watch solve this problem. Some books you might look at might do two substitutions here. Once they, got to this, once they got to this step right here, they might say let v equal 3x and then dv equals 3 and do all kinds of stuff. That's just a little bit too confusing to me. I think it's easiest because, of, because we can just divide the 3 out from here and get it over to the other side. If we finish this off, we get 1 third u cubed over 3 plus c which becomes sine 3x cubed over 9 plus c. Did I do that right? 
No, U was just sine. Because if U is sine squared, then DU would be 2 sine 3x cosine 3x times 3. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, yeah. Yep, sine 3x. Follow it there? Because we're integrating u. That's how we got, uh, so it's u squared. Very good. Okay, as I was saying, as you work through problems, don't be afraid to come back and look at these, okay? This is a really important skill to get as we move forward. So I'm going to stop talking and let you work.